Well, the magma was was feeling around looking for for a weakness to reach the surface, and and that body of magma has to has to reach a high enough pressure to break through the rocks, e even along this this fissure that it's currently erupting. The lava appears to be flowing in the right direction at the moment, but could that potentially change? Yeah, it's it's very lucky. Um, and actually, if you look on look on uh, Google Earth, say you can see the topography there, and it, it could go towards Blue Lagoon. It could go south, but it's just happening at the moment mainly to, to be flowing east. Now, one of the things about lava flows is they make land as they cool. They 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 make the new land surface. So later lava flows, if this keeps going for several weeks, later lava flows can be dammed by the earlier lava flows, and then they start controlling which direction the lava's moving in. So the longer this goes on, the more of a hazard there is for Grindavik, the, the, the town to the south, and to the Blue Lagoon. What is going on with that point? Do we have any idea how long the eruption and also the seismic activity could continue on for? Well, at the moment, it's quite it's quite vigorous the eruption. So last yesterday, when it when it first erupted, there was really hot, highly fluid magma. That you saw those those wonderful fire fountains just throwing um, red splatter everywhere. Um, initially, it erupted all the way along the fissure, but now it's being concentrated at, at individual vents along that fissure. So it's already decreased in magnitude. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that it's about to stop. It could carry on like this for weeks or months. It all depends on when it runs out of magma. We all remember the chaos, of course, caused in 2010 when airspace over Europe was closed due to these ash clouds from another volcano. Are we likely at all to see the same thing happen again here? Almost certainly not. So the great thing about about um, lava in in Iceland is it's it's called basalt, basaltic lava, and it's it's very runny and it doesn't really make ash. Now what happened in two thousand and ten was the lava erupted through a glacier, and it melted the glacier, generated lots of water, and that's really explosive, and that broke the magma into tiny little dust particles and chilled the magma to make glass and that's the worst possible combination because when tiny particles of glass go through a jet engine they melt and they coat the inside of the engine with glass and obviously jet engines don't work very well with a thin covering of glass. Almost 4,000 people of course were evacuated ahead of this eruption finally taking place. What conditions are required for it to be considered to be safe enough for those people to return to their homes? Is there a period of time the lava has to have stopped flowing for instance? Well Iceland has a, a, a wonderful system of, of volcano monitoring and, and volcanic eruptions in Iceland are, are pretty much the national pastime. You'll remember last year with the eruptions there, pictures of large numbers of tourists just gathering right next to the lava flows. Now, this is a different kettle of fish because it's still very active. But if it, if it becomes calmer and it continues doing the same thing for a long period of time, they may well let people go and see the lava flow. But as long as there is any chance at all that those flows could reach Grindavik, they will not allow people to get to go back. Well, just speaking of tourists as well, of course, this has obviously provided a boost to tourism. Lots of people wanting to go see uh, some of these amazing images we've just had on our screen. Is this a worry at all with this sudden influx of people perhaps getting a little too close? Always. So at the moment, those lava flows are very hot um, and, and, and that makes them very mobile. So the main problem with, with lava flows is, is you know, you being downhill from them and then them rushing at you. Um, as long as you can get out of the way and stay to stay on the high ground, you are you are relatively safe. But they they put out an enormous amount of heat. So if you think of your oven at home, that goes up to two hundred and fifty degrees C. These are, are about one thousand one hundred degrees C. So you imagine standing close to that. 
So you don't need to touch the lava for it to actually get burnt. I think I'll stay where I am at the moment. Dr. Matthew Genge, thank you so much for your time. Thanks.